Hey everyone, I wanted to come back and do another video about uh, prehistory for my homeschool. So I made another video, which I will link up above or down below or both um, about some prehistory resources that I was looking at um, for next year. I shared Blossom and Root and um, Build Your Library. And in that video, you can see that I didn't like love either one of them. And I was feeling a little not sure like what I was going to do. And I didn't love a lot of the books either. Like nothing was really like clicking with me. Um, so I was going to just, I started ordering like every prehistory, um, prehistoric times, all of that dinosaurs books from the library. And I thought I'm just going to find one that I like the flow of and use that as my spine and just kind of build my own thing. But then I came across um, Harbor and Sprout, which I knew about, but I kind of forgot about. Um, and they have a paleontology unit. They have a primary level unit study and they have a secondary level unit study. So I think this one is like middle school and high school and this one's elementary school. They also have a morning basket pack, um, but that one was too young for us. So this is what I got and this is what I think I'm going to go with. I'm going to show you a little bit of a flip through of this. I'll show you a little bit of the secondary level, but I don't think I'm going to use that one right now. I think I'm going to save this one more for an independent study, um, you know, for my kids when they're a little older or my daughter in the next you know, year or two. So I'll show you more of that one in a minute. But um, <clears throat> the primary level, I bought the unit study and then they have a workbook that you can get as well. Now, I did not print the whole workbook. I'll show you this in a little bit. I printed just the pages that I think are useful to us. So there's a lot in here that I won't use as far as like um, some of the activity suggestions and things like that, but there's a lot that I think is good. And so initially I wasn't as drawn to this because it uh, the kind of order that they present things didn't necessarily click with my brain and the way I thought I would present information. But I think it's a good thing sometimes to do things a little differently than you normally would because it made sense to someone, <laughs> you know, and I think it's just, I think it's a good thing to kind of stretch ourselves and um, learn a little by doing something the way someone else you know, sees as an organized way. So I got over that pretty quick. Um, so basically the unit study is made up of three parts, information, notebooking, and activities. And they say you'll need a notebook to kind of do activities um, alongside your studies. Um, they also provide some um, notebooking pages that are like, um, kind of like a grid, there's some dots, just some, some pages like that, that if you wanted to make a notebook with printing those you could. We're just going to use our science notebooks that we've been using um, this whole year. So this particular unit has 20 modules. Each module has information, notebooking, and activities. So the information is the reading portion of the module. Your child can do it independently or you can do it along with them. Um, there's a notebooking section in each module and they give you some notebooking ideas. Some of those we're gonna use and some of them we're gonna do our own thing. Um, also in the back, there is like a whole list of, um, unit vocabulary that you could use, um, in your notebooking or writing. And then we have activities. Each module contains a selection of activities and hands-on learning experiences to choose from. Again, some of these are too, what's the word? Probably too fluffy for us, um, but what I like about this is this could fit a lot of different homeschooling styles, depending on how you use it. Um, so here are the modules uh, included. Uh, there are 20 of them. So we go through the science of paleontology, vertebrate paleontology, invertebrate paleontology, paleobotany, uh, micropaleontology, all the way down through fossils, the world of dinosaurs. You get to watch Jurassic Park, which is exciting. 
um, becoming a paleontologist, and then a focus on paleo art with the artist Charles R. Knight, which I think is kind of cool as well. So this is what the first page looks like. You're introduced to Charles, and you'll find him throughout the unit to help guide you on your paleontology journey. And we get into a little description of what each of the modules are, a little talk about what paleontology is, and then you can see what each module is about. So a little glimpse into it, which is nice. And there are 20. And then we get right into module one. So unlike some of the other units I was looking at, this has some meat to it. It's not just a book list, there is information. Um, so you can go ahead and read this. The illustrations are really nice. I like that there's these little fun facts and did you know? And so we will likely do notebooking along with this, as in we will read all this and then we will do some drawing and note taking on what we read in our science uh, notebooks. Um, this particular module tells you a little bit about um, all the different fields of paleontology. And then you get to the notebooking prompts and activity ideas. Each module has a page of notebooking prompts and a page of activity ideas. Now, as I mentioned before, not all of these are kind of our cup of tea and that's okay. Sometimes I was able to find one that I think will work for us. And there's a few modules where I don't really like any of them. So we'll just do our regular notebooking then. Um, so a lot of these are more like um, creative, imaginary thinking. And that is all right, but it's not quite where I wanna go with this. So. Um, these ones are more like creative. Imagine you're a fossil and a paleontologist lets you see the light of the sky again. Imagine what your life was like. Um, invent a fictional interview between a paleontologist and a revived dinosaur species. So none of these like really spoke to me that much, but that like, that's okay. And then the activity ideas, um, again, some of them, in some of the modules, I, there's one that I'm like, yes, that will work. And then others I'm like, mm, I don't know, I'll probably do something else. Um, but here you're, you create some fossils, um, but like dress up as a paleontologist, my kids would actually probably love this. Um, will we do it as our official activity? Probably not. Will they do it anyway? Probably. <laughs> um, I like this one, create a timeline collage of the history of paleontology. That has uh, potential for me. Um, make a diorama with materials like clay, colored paper, and miniature dinosaurs and fossils. Create your own prehistoric scenes or a paleontological, paleontological, I can't say that word, excavation site. So anyway, you can see there's a real mix of activities. Then we get into module two. It tells you a little bit about what it's about. And you can see, like, I think it's really, I like the color, I like the way it's laid out. I think it's important how information is presented visually to kids. It matters, I think, to them. And this is nice. I like the way it kind of breaks apart information for the way my brain works. This works really well. So, And then we have notebooking prompts and activity ideas. And again, a lot of these are more like on the creative um, side of it, but like here's one research and lists three unique adaptations that amphibians, amphibians developed during their evolution. How do these adaptations help them survive in different environments? I like that one. But then there's also one that's like, imagine you're a primitive amphibian making its first days out of water, describe your adventure. So I feel like there's a lot of um, room in here to find where you fit. And then same thing with activity ideas. And then we go into the next module. So this I like so far the best out of any <laughs> that we've done, that I've looked at. So this is what we are going to do. Um, this is what we're going to do. Uh, there was a notebooking prompt I liked here. Oh, design a comic strip illustrating the step-by-step -step process of fossilization. That's something we would do. To me, that's like a combination of the um, use, in my opinion, the useful um, 
activity for helping remember or show what you've learned combined with a little bit of a creative uh, fun aspect. So that to me, this is like a good uh, notebooking prompt for us. And then the activity ideas for that one. So yeah, I think there's a lot. And I think what the other thing I like about this is because I'll be using it with two different age kids, a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old, I don't, I can give them each a different activity or there's room within the activity for it to be done at, a, at different levels, if that makes sense. So I like that. So that is what it looks like. I think there's a lot of really good information. Um, the Harbor and Sprout, this is the first unit that I purchased through them. Um, they do give you who created this particular unit. You can go on their website and read about all of their staff. They do have on staff, um, oh, I forget now exactly. Her uh, degree is in like prehistory or something. And while I don't think she's the one who wrote this curriculum, I would assume that she would have been the one who fact-checked this. But anyway, they have a whole slew of staff members from all different areas uh, of study and of life. And so I kind of like that, that it's not just one person who writes all of their uh, units. So, oh, this is the other thing that was important to me. And this was, in my mind, the module I would have started with. Um, which is why this unit kind of threw me a little bit, but they go through the geological time, but it's all the way in module 16, but it includes it. Again, I'm going to trust their process on this, but we go through the era, the periods, and the epics, and I think that that's really um, important to go through. So I'm glad that that includes that, even if it's in a different, um, in a different uh, order than I would have done it. So... I also like that this includes art um, and a focus on a specific uh, scientist. So here we get to uh, look at Mary Anning a little closer. So I think that's cool. And then um, all about becoming a paleontologist. I think that's an interesting addition. And then here's the paleo art, which I really like that they've included as well. Now this is, oh, hold on, let me show you the workbook as well. Um, so this is a little pricier. I believe this was 30 as a digital download. I, I think the workbook was 12, if I remember correctly. Um, now I want to say there were like over 200 pages that you could print for workbook pages. I did not print anywhere near that. This is what I print, and there's two copies in here of everything. This is what I chose that would work well for us. Um, again, a lot of the stuff was, like, not the direction I wanted to go. It was, like, um, create your own dinosaur and draw a picture and write about it. And I wasn't as into that as much. Um, so some of the things I did choose to print from the workbook, um, there were a couple of these which seem a little young for my kids, but I think for my nine-year-old, this would just be a good um, kind of spelling practice, a good print, and then I could have him rewrite them in cursive down here so he can practice some of his cursive. So I did print those for him. Um, and then I printed pages like this where it talks about paleontology, and then it asks you to kind of write about it in your own words and then make a picture. Those we could put in our notebook. They can draw themselves as a paleontologist. This one I like, this is prehistoric fish fact sheet, where they're gonna choose a prehistoric fish species to study and record their discoveries here. Draw a picture, I like that. Uh, this one is a Venn diagram comparing prehistoric birds and modern birds, that's a good one, like that's a good fit for us. Uh, drawing invertebrate fossils and writing note about notes about each specimen. Herbarium. Paleobotany, again, kind of draw a picture and write a little bit about what you think it is, what your life would look like as a paleobotanist. So these are just some of the ones that we decided to print that I thought fit the way that we like to learn. I do really like notebooking, so 
that definitely works for us. So those are some of the ones we printed. These are some of the types of pages they have in there for notebooking. Like this is a dot page and they have a grid page and things like that as well. So that's what we chose to print that I'm going to use. Now, let me show you some of the books that they recommend. Um, so in the back of the primary level unit study, there is um, book recommendations here. They also have additional resources linked here. And I love that they uh, list their sources of where they got their information for from when they were writing the curriculum. So I did go ahead and put some of these books on hold at the library. Um, and I'm going to show you the ones that I liked the most. And then I'll show you a few other books that we're going to add in as well. And then I'll just give you a sneak peek at that secondary level unit. So one of the books that we will borrow from the library when we get to that last unit on art is this one called Mesozoic Art. I thought it was really beautiful, but it's not one I need to own by any for any reason, uh, but it's beautiful. And I think that my kids would enjoy looking at this. And it just, it focuses on different artists, different paleo artists. Um, and I believe, Are any of these, I don't think any of these are the ones they focused on in the unit study. I think these are others. So, um, but anyway, it's, it's very beautiful. So the library has this one. We can borrow it, uh, from there. Um, oh, I know, you know what I didn't show you is there's a whole section on Jurassic Park and we aren't going to read the book, but we will watch the movie. And I love that it goes through, <clears throat> and where is it? Is everything in Jurassic Park true? And it kind of goes through, through it from that uh, aspect, that look at it, and I like that. Kind of like the error, the reality of what it would be. Um, but anyway, so we will, I'm sure, watch the movie, but I doubt we'll read the book. All right, so let's look at a few others that we're, we will borrow from the library to use. Um, I like this one on Mary Anning. This is called Fossil Hunter. So we will probably borrow this one from the library when we get to it. Um, I like the illustrations that are woven throughout this one. There's a lot of books on Mary Anning. There's more picture book versions and there's more chapter book versions. And I feel like this one's kind of right in the middle. Um, so that's one that I like the look of that we will borrow from the library. Um, let's see here. I think is this one on there? Yes. So this one is the DK Smithsonian dinosaur, um, and other prehistoric creatures atlas. Now, something important to note about this one is it is the exact same book as this one. So this one was mentioned in either Blossom and Root or Build Your Library, um, but it is, it's exactly the same book as this one. So this is the newer version. Um, and if you look here, it is exactly the same. So this, um, this is one we're going to purchase for our collection. Uh, my daughter's actually really into dinosaurs right now, which is funny because she never, neither of my kids really had that dinosaur stage when they were little, uh, but now she is. Anyway, what I like about this book is it's arranged geographically where dinosaurs were. were. So I like the look of that one. Um, one of the other ones that they recommend is another Smithsonian uh, dinosaurs and other amazing prehistoric creatures as you've never seen them before. This is another one that I think we will probably add to our shelf. And um, I like that this one, um, in contrast to the other one, which goes geographically, this one goes chronologically. And it has, uh, no, that's not the page, uh, across the top or bottom, 
exactly where you are in the chronology of prehistory as you're looking at the page. So as you get towards the end, you're further along in their little timeline there. So I like that one. That's one we would like to add to our collection. Two others that I really liked, but I think we will just borrow from the library. But they're beautiful, and I had a really hard time not buying them. But these two right here, Dinosaurs and Other Prehistoric Life, and Dinosaur Bones and What They Tell Us. And this is, you know, one of those just really beautiful books. It's got the gold edging, and it has a lot of really nice illustrations. But I felt like from a longevity standpoint, this maybe wouldn't go as far for us. I don't know. If I could find this at the thrift store for a few bucks, I would totally buy it. But I had limited funds for what books I could buy for this unit. So this is one that we will gladly just borrow from the library. But um, what I do like is that for each era, it gives you kind of a little timeline like this with a little more information. So I really like that part of it. And I really love this, but I think it might be a little young for my kids. But I feel like you could do this whole unit with younger kids with like just this book and notebooking. Um, <clears throat> I really like this one. I love the look of it. I love how it's laid out. And for each one, it gives you an example of like the dinosaur and then more information about it here. So we have an iguanodon, and then we have information about that whole type of dinosaur. So here we have this specific dinosaur, and then here we have more information on duck-billed dinosaurs in general. Stegosaurus, and then we have more information on plated dinosaurs in general. So the whole um, book kind of goes like that. And then when you get to the back, you get into um, yeah, flying reptiles. Some water animals, early birds, large tooth hunters. We get into the woolly mammoth or mammoths and early elephants. And then we've got our timeline here. So I think this is a really great one. And then into fossils. I love it. Again, if money were no object, I would get that one as well. All right, and then some extra books um, that we, this is another one we're gonna borrow from the library. My daughter really likes Dino Dana, and this is a Dino Field Guide. This is volume two, um, volume one hasn't come in yet. But I think this is a really cool book that's set up kind of like Dino Dana's field notebook. And, yeah, I think this is really neat. So I think my daughter is really going to like that one. So that's another one we're going to borrow from the library. And then I purchased a few. Uh, these ones you probably already saw. I believe I showed them in my other video. And then I also showed them in my book outlet haul, which I'll also link somewhere. Um, but these go through the Paleozoic era, the Mesozoic era, and the Cenozoic era, and their graphic novel style. And there's a lot of really excellent information in these. I chose to buy these rather than get them from the library because things that are graphic novels like this, my kids go back and reread over and over and over and over again. So um, those ones I did purchase. And then this one my kids specifically asked if I would get. They really like these Ken Jennings books, the Junior Genius Guides, and they knew there was one on dinosaurs. So when they heard we were going to be doing this, they asked if we could get this one. So, and again, this is something that they'll go back and reread. So I was good in purchasing it. All right, and then lastly, I'll just show you real quickly the secondary level unit study from Harbor and Sprout, um, which I think is meant for more middle school, high school. This one has nine modules and it spends a little more time going through each of the eras. So I feel like this would be good to build on the unit we're already doing um, as my kids are just a little bit older. So this one is much more black and white. There is some color in it, I'm pretty sure not as much, but they still have the notebooking prompts and the activity ideas. There's a little bit of color, there we go. So that's what that one looks like. Um, and like I said, I think this would be good for an independent study uh, 
for my kids down the road. So some of the notebook game prompts here are like write a timeline, comparing and contrasting the periods of the Paleozoic era. Sketch plant and animal life from the Paleozoic era and annotate each organism's main features. So this is much more in depth, but again, um, I think this will, I think we're building some layers of knowledge by doing the elementary unit first, and then we can bring this back for them as maybe an independent study later on. So that's what that looks like. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down below. I will put a link uh, for the Harbor and Sprout, <clears throat> and I think I can give you a coupon code because I did sign up to be an affiliate. There's a few other units that I think look really good in there that I want to try. Um, but I'll link all that down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I will talk to you down in the comments.